Hey Grace, uh, week two of our Finding Rest in a Restless World series. I'm really excited about today and what we're gonna talk about. But first, I just wanna do a quick check-in. How did your five minutes a day go this last week? Uh, did you find towards the end that you began to crave that time? Um, maybe on day four, five, or six, you realized, man, I, I went 10 or 15 minutes instead of just the five, or let's be honest, maybe day one or two, it was hard to find five minutes, and, and I totally get that. But what I want to do today is I want to look back at the very beginning. I want to look at where the story started at Genesis chapter one. I'm not going to read any of it to you today, but I would invite you maybe in your five minutes tomorrow to go read Genesis one and look at it and a uh, quick pop quiz. Uh, in Genesis chapter one, God blesses three things. Do you know what those three things are? I bet you do if you think about it. That the first thing that he blesses is he blesses the animals and he commands them to be fruitful and multiply. And then we see the propagation of the animal species all across the face of the earth, the birds of the air, the things that crawl on the ground, the fish that swim in the sea. And then the second thing that he blessed was he blessed man and woman. And he also told them to be fruitful and multiply. And so from that first man, Adam, and first woman, Eve, come all of the generations of man from the first day till now. And then he blessed one other thing. And often we skip past it because maybe we don't think it's the fun part of the story, but at the very end of Genesis chapter one, it says that God worked for six days and then he rested on the seventh day and then it says that he blessed it. He blessed that day and he made it holy. And Jesus taught about this very thing in the New Testament and actually it's probably one of the most powerful sermons that he ever preached but interestingly enough it's one of the shortest sermons he ever preached and in fact it's only a one sentence sermon and he says this he says that the Sabbath was made for man the man wasn't made for Sabbath. And what Jesus is saying there and what God has for you and I this week is this understanding that we are designed in God's image and if God rested on the seventh day, then guess what church? You should rest on the seventh day. You should take that day and you should stop and well, what does it mean? Does it mean that you just don't do anything? No, it doesn't mean that you don't do anything. Actually what it means is that you take a day and you delight in God and what he has for you. And that might look different for everybody. I'm going to tell you one of the things that I love to do on the Sabbath day uh, at my house is I, I love to, to, to do yard work. And I go, well, but wait, that's work. And it is work, but it's not the work that I do like during the week. It's I actually enjoy it and I find peace for my soul and rest for my soul in it. It's not the day-to-day -day mundane thing that I do uh, every day at work. And I know that that sounds crazy for to hear a pastor say the everyday mundane thing, but listen, sometimes my day is just like your day at the office. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to read this chapter. I've got to do this book, or I've got to do this thing, or I've got this meeting. And it's vital for me to just stop. Becky likes to bake. Savannah likes to bake. Cooper likes to lay in the hammock and sleep all day. I think we all have different ways that we enjoy our Sabbath, but the important thing is that it's a day that we stop and we rest from everything that we do during the week and we just delight in God. And so here's my challenge this week, guys. We're gonna keep building from week to week. I want you to continue your five minutes a day. Remember, you made that, that, that promise last week that you're gonna give five minutes a day, but this week, what I want you to do is I want you to be very intentional about your Sabbath day. What day is it going to be? Maybe your Sabbath day is on Monday because that's when you're off work or maybe it's a Wednesday. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you take that day. And I want you to plan what that day is going to look like. And then I want you to stick to it. Church, have a great week. And I can't wait to sit down with you next week and look at the next step in finding rest in a restless world.